Hi, so we are some of the lab techs from the Innovation Lab. I'm Josh. I'm Elizabeth. And today we're going to talk to you about building your boat. The lab contains many tools that can help you build your boat. One of the tools are the 3D printers. We only use the 3D printers for small parts, not complete boats. The laser cutter. The laser cutter is used to cut thin plywood that you can use to create the silhouette of your boat, the ribs, and different parts of your boat and the hull. For the laser cutter, you would have to bring your own material. We also have a CNC wire cutter. It is used to cut foam. In order to do this, you would have to bring in a SOLIDWORKS CAD file or a DXF 2D profile, which is kind of just the outline of whatever shape you want to be cut out. We also have a hot wire cutter that's handheld that you can manipulate and move as you like carve out your boat. For both these, you would have to bring your own foam, which is fairly inexpensive and you can find at Home Depot. All right, so now I'm gonna go over a couple different designs that you can use when making your boat. So here I have an assortment of previous boats from uh, previous years. So these ones here are gonna be probably the easiest uh, design to go with. Uh, this is a uh, high density foam that you can get at Home Depot. It's fairly inexpensive and it's really easy to work with. And so in this case, you can see they went with a pontoon style boat and they used, um, this is, must have been some kind of packing foam or something. Um, and then a little Tupperware container for their electronics. This is important to ensure that your uh, circuit board does not get wet. If it gets wet with that water, it will basically instantly kill it. So think about a way to kind of seal up your electronics. Um, they've also gone with a mounting system here, which is made of wood. So in this case, this is just stuff that they cut by hand, but we can laser cut brackets and plates as well. Um, and then they've done a little rudder here with their servo. This is also something I would stay away from, the prop based. Just about every team that uses this ends up getting their fingers whacked and that's not fun so um, we would not advise doing this but that is an option this is another foam boat here this is a more traditional design um, this one was done by cutting out individual segments in different shapes and then gluing them together and sanding it to make that contour uh, same thing here there's a rudder and they have a little magnetic lid that goes on to seal it uh, and same thing here with a little waterproof enclosure so one thing to note with the foam is with the rudder you want to use these little hinge parts here uh, you can get these at hobby shops and these are used usually for ailerons on airplanes and these are nice because you can put them into the foam far and then they won't rip out uh, so here you can see they use the glue and that makes it so it's very strong Another thing you're going to want is this control horn and this is something that you can just bolt on or glue on to your rudder and this is so when you put a wire between the servo and that it will allow this to move. Without that you won't have any leverage in your servo or your rudder won't be able to turn. Um, other than that, other things to note, um, if you're using a propeller design you need to have some kind of tube on the bottom. Um, this one actually was removed, but basically the motor would mount here in the front and then there would be a brass pipe going down to the bottom where there would be a propeller and you pack that with grease so that it doesn't allow water to flow back in. Uh, so this is a pretty typical design um, and this would be considered a hole that would be good for the electronics and control. Now if you want to do something a little bit more um, a little bit more time intensive. You could do something like this. This is more along the lines of what you would see with the RC boat. So this is all made out of wood um, with some foam inserts to space things out. So most of this was laser cut and then glued together. And how this was made is with a subframe like this. So you can see these were laser cut. And then a thin aircraft plywood was put on top and glued and then that was later sealed with epoxy so this is going to take a lot longer and if you don't have experience building things um, this might not be a good idea but if you want to do something a little more 
and something fast, um, this could be a route to go. All right, so now we're going to talk about some of the electronics that can be provided to you by the Innovation Lab. So this is a little circuit board here that uh, will take the power in from your battery. It has two MOSFETs on it that can control any DC brushed motor. Um, and it has four PWM outputs for servos or motor controllers. Um, so if you get a brushless motor with an ESC, you can use the signal from one of these to control your motor speed. This is the um, motor, uh, microprocessor. Uh, this is a MSP 432 F5529. And we'll be providing some example code with this um, that will get you started. So this will clip on there, just like that. And uh, this board also has a gyroscope on it so that it will know the current heading of the boat. And so you can use that to correct in case your boat starts um, going off course. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later. And the final thing we'll be providing is this servo here. Uh, this is a really nice servo. It's got a lot of torque, so this is really good for um, rudder control. And this will be able to plug into the little servo PWM output there, just like that. Um, and then that's basically the controls for your boat. So in order to get one of these, um, we ask that you have a boat that is built and tested. Um, just so we don't give these out and they get destroyed because they get wet or, you know, just something like that. So we have enough for uh, all groups. So just come in uh, once you have a boat and you can come in before you have a boat to ask us um, questions about building it, but you won't be able to get one of these until you have something built and then we'll take a look at it and approve it. Um, also, these will have to be returned after the competition. So just keep that in mind and to use this in your boat project, it will add, um, you have to account $10 for this set of um, electronics in your budget. All right, so now we're gonna talk about some of the recommended parts. So this is a really nice little motor kit on Amazon. Uh, it's prime, so you can get it pretty quick. It's 14 bucks or 15 bucks. Um, it comes with a, a electronic speed controller, brushless motor, and then some mounting hardware. Um, so this is a really nice little system here that can uh, easily be interfaced with the electronics that we provide. And another thing to get is the mounting hardware for the shaft. Um, this one here is designed to interface with that motor specifically. So it has this little um, couple here that couples to the motor shaft. It has a uh, little collar here that interfaces with the propeller and then it's got set screws and all the hardware you need to basically assemble it. So it's, it's really hard to make this separately um, without it, the propeller coming off and things like that. So uh, we really recommend buying this kit and this one just to get your drivetrain uh, up and running. And then you can also see there are lots of options for propellers. Um, again, we uh, recommend not buying the metal ones because they, um, they're just dangerous and like um, if you sand them, it's bad. and um, you know, there's a lot greater risk for injury with those. So, and the plastic ones are fine for the level of stuff you guys need to be doing. So, um, again, this little motor kit here, the, um, shaft and coupler system. And then this even comes with a little propeller. You can probably use that if you wanted something different. There are lots of other options. All right. So now we're going to talk about, um, basically what the program is going to allow you to do in the reflection pond. So, uh, basically what it will do is it will allow you to maintain a certain heading and then you will be able to tweak that heading at different time intervals. So um, this is the reflection pond and the starting point is here. Um, one thing people will try and do without a active control system is just kind of angle the rudder. But it's really hard to do uh, with a constant turning. It's really hard to get it to go around this because you're not really going in a full circle, it's more like an ellipse shape if you plot the like, desired path here. So um, it really needs to be actively driven to reliably do that. So what we have um, will again allow you to maintain a heading even if it gets pushed by the fountain um, or waves or whatever. So 
typically what people will do is they will um, have it maintain the initial heading that you align it to when you start and then after some time based on the speed of the boat um, that heading will be shifted by maybe 45 degrees um, and so then the course will go like that and then after some more time it'll get shifted by um, another 45 degrees and then two more times until you get around so this is something you'll have to tweak with your boat and it's very specific to your boat and depending on the hull and the motor that you're using um, because it's going to be purely time-based so if your boat's going fast you know you need to change it so um, we really recommend having or planning to have your boat done and built several days or even maybe a week before the competition so that you can go out and try it uh, multiple times and tweak it. Usually the teams that end up winning are the ones that you know stayed out um, the night before and several days in advance testing it, tweaking it. Um, so definitely plan on having a few days to tweak it and get it home done. All right, so some of the lab rules are no power tools allowed unless the, the hand drills that we have here. And the no power tool rule applies to your personal tools that you would potentially bring into the lab. Um, if you have to cut something, go to the machine shop next door. The entrance is on the backside of that lab and they'll be able to cut virtually anything that you bring to them. Um, also, no operations that produce dust. Uh, an example of an operation that would produce dust is filing or sanding wood. Um, something that we would allow though is filing metal over a garbage can because the metal shavings will rapidly fall. Please clean up after yourself um, and return tools after you're done using them or if your team is taking a break from using them. For additional questions and materials, just talk to one of the lab techs.